Hey guys, my first full day here in Madrid and just such a breathtaking city. Everywhere you walk, like every single house, every single brick just oozes culture and history. And Madrid, of course, is, is like the melting pot city in Spain, where a lot of people from all over reside here and bringing with them different backgrounds, cultures, recipes. So trying to figure out what to eat in Madrid right now is a little difficult because it's just so much. But I feel like my first day, I, I gotta go to the famous San Miguel Market. Very funny. Tapas de Sichuan. Fitting. But there's the market. Let's go eat. This is a cover market. It's been around for over 100 years, and everything here, everything is related to food. So, my strategy for today eat the heck out of this place. And we're going to start from here, San Martin. This place is supposed to have amazingly fresh seafood. And, and apparently a sea monster. Oh, good lord. A variety of fried seafood and just crab and all sorts of dishes. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is amazing looking. Crab tapas. Let's do this. It's crab seaweed and there's wasabi in here. Never had crab and seaweed as my first bite of food ever in my life before, but I'm excited about this. Mm. It's good. Maybe like a 7 out of 10 good. A little overly salty. I love the crunch of the seaweed and the sweetness of the crab. I can't really taste the, the wasabi on them in here. The sauce is a little barbecue-y. I think these are sea grapes, nice and crunchy. I think all the ingredients are incredibly fresh. And I love the fragrant sesame element of this as well. But I wish I had like a, a side dish of rice to eat with this because this is a little over seasoned for me. I think this is supposed to be like a kind of an Asian interpretation of crab and seaweed with the sesame and with the sauce that's supposed to maybe mimic, mimic a little of the teriyaki sauce. Oh, getting a hint of the wasabi, a little spicy. Still good, not a must get. This is a little one-sided sandwich made of burrata cheese. And there's savory versions, like the pesto, and there's the sweet version. Oh, this I like. The cheese tastes like a really creamy, fluffy, slightly salty mozzarella. And it leaves just such a nice milky flavor in my mouth. The cheese is so incredibly light and airy. Mmm but there's still little chewy strands in there. And I could see why this could be served both as a savory dish and as a sweet dish. The cheese itself, like I said, just slightly salty, but really you're just tasting how incredibly milky and creamy and how light the texture is. So with some blueberry, it tastes like the lightest, milkiest cheesecake. I'm actually really loving this. Mm. This place has the largest variety of empanadas I may have ever seen. Some of the really interesting flavors like tuna and egg, starting with tomatoes, bacon and pineapple. Three empanadas, different shapes, different ingredients. Let's, let's start off with the tuna. So it looks like tuna and some egg whites. I love tuna, by the way. That tuna tasted like it lived on land its whole life. Oh, that was so dry. I think the pastry is a little too much and it's really just not enough filling. And this thing, yeah, this is a bummer. Pork loin and apple. Much better. One of the tastiest empanadas I've had. I mean, apple and pork, this is genius. Mmm. Oh. That filling is so good. It's like a pig ate a bunch of apples, and I'm eating that pig right now. A little dry still, but that flavor's out of this world. I mean, a little dipping sauce will make this really awesome. This is the pear and chocolate. Ooh. 
Ooh, oh, I smell the pear already. Mm. Mm. That's awesome. A little cinnamon. There's a slight hint of chocolate, more so on just the outside. It's just fragrant, juicy pears. The outer shell, not too heavy, and this thing is stuffed. Get this when you come here. This is a classic ham and arugula in a wrap. I'm sure this is not the highest quality of ham, but still rich and savory, smooth texture, delightfully smoky flavor with just a hint of fat. Oh, love the bacon here. Love it. Bunch of olive tapas, and I got some ham and cheese, chilies, and looks like anchovies, and crab. And people are just eating this, having a drink. Since I don't drink, let's just eat it. Ham and cheese. Does that look like olive Pac Man to you guys? It's like this olive is trying to eat this ham right here. But little do they know, a larger predator is lurking nearby. Wow, actually. The whole combo is hitting me just now. Oh my God. The olive is so fresh tasting with the creaminess of the cheese and the savoriness of the ham. It's like I'm eating the tastiest breadless sandwich. I'm not even quite sure what this is. It looks like anchovies and chilies. Mm. Little sweet, little spicy, and the anchovies are actually quite chewy. A oh, nice chewy texture. I was surprised. I thought it was just gonna like fall apart. And it contains such a nice flavor of the ocean. Looks like a crab claw that reached into a bag of Cheetos. Mmm. It tastes a little like imitation crab meat, like something artificial. But as you chew it and let the flavor develop, a little sweet and then the crab flavor hits you. Again, the olive is the star. Also, the beautiful sweet crunch from the pearl onions. All together with that crab claw, probably the most surprisingly delicious thing I had today. Mm. Oh, I missed that. This is one of the best fruits I had in Peru. Mm. This stall is pretty interesting. So you pick a flavor, you pick the toppings, toast it, hot or cold. Whoa, it's nice and toasty on the outside. The bread is really fluffy, really airy. The ice cream is obviously melting, but it's not completely melted, so you can still get that nice icy taste. Chocolate on top. I like the toasty crunch on the outside. This is really interesting. It's like you're eating a toasty bun with an ice cream center. This is one of those things that's it's fun to watch it being made, and it's fun to eat. I think I tried everything I wanted to try inside this market, but I'm still hungry, so let's get out of here and go eat more tapas. Hi, I totally underestimated how much I actually ate at the last market. So after the subsequent food coma at the hotel, I'm ready to eat again. And it's only five o'clock, so still late lunchtime here. Let's go. I know I had the ham wrap before, but saw this, start salivating, let's get another sandwich. This is hornazo, pork loin stuffed inside this pastry. You got little sandwiches as well. Or if you have a bigger appetite. You better call this is Spanish pork. Look at this, that's amazing. The pork is even draping over the outside of the sandwich. That is so pretty. Strands of fat running along the sides in the middle of the pork. The ham I had this morning, it was good, but it wasn't all that juicy. This looks like a juicy slice of ham. Mm. Bread crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside. Ham is ridiculous. I wish there was more of it because I feel like the, the bread to ham ratio is a little off. That was a melty slice of ham. Smoky and savory. I love the chew of the lean part of the meat. And I love how that fat 
just renders and melts on my tongue. I mean, I've had this in the States, but just eating this here, it's just such a deliciously unique experience. Mm. This is the Hornazo and it's, it's heavy like a brick. Oh, it's in this pastry. This is basically a meat pie. Chorizo, pork loin, slices of ham on top. Eating it as is right now, it's probably not the best thing. You really need to put this in the oven and roast it, I think. But since I don't have an oven and I wanna eat this, I gotta make do. Oh, this is so incredibly good. I mean, the pastry is so gentle and soft, but really when you take a bite, it's all about the meat. You got the spicy chorizo, the smoky ham, and that pork loin. Oh my goodness, that pork loin. That thing might just be my Spanish food soulmate. I thought it was gonna be way overly salty to the point where it's maybe you can only take like a few bites and then that's it. Oh man, no, uh -uh. The different types of pork blend together deliciously. It's like with all the different pork powers combined, a captain sandwich appeared. Again, already good cold. Can you imagine what's like out of the oven? And this place, according to one of my viewers, La Toro is the best. Look at this, it's just full. You can't stuff a single bit more calamari on the sandwich. Very tender, crispy, fresh out of the fryer. And that's all it is. It's really, there's it's nothing on the sandwich except for bread and fried calamari. Oh, that's one of the tender-ish fried calamari I have ever had. And what you do is you spray some lemon on top, little mayonnaise, And then just unhinge your jaw the best you can and indulge. I love how seemingly simple this is. Fried calamari, some mayonnaise, some lemon juice. But the thing is the calamari is fried so perfectly. I mean, we all have fried calamari before. Usually you gotta chew that sucker, right? This barely have to put your teeth together and this thing disintegrates. Little lemon juice, little mayonnaise, fresh roll. That's all you need to enjoy this. All right, now for a proper sit down meal. I heard the pork cheeks are amazing, and I heard the prawns with garlic is amazing. This is their most known dish, the gambas, garlic shrimp, and man, there's a lot of butter in here. Prawns soaked in this lake of butter and garlic and chilies as well. There's really a couple ways to eat this. First of all, eat the prawn. Mm. Oh, that's plump and tender. After you eat that, take your bread, dip that baby in there. Get it all up in there. Make it go deep diving. Oh, oh yeah. If you like garlic and butter, and most people do, you'll love this. Mm. This is the pork cheek. Oh my gosh, that is so tender. Oh man, that thing just falls apart. Sitting on a bed of potatoes. I've got a tender feeling about this dish. I'm confused because the pork is on top of a bit of mashed potatoes and when I put this in my mouth, I couldn't really tell where the mashed potato ended and the pork began. That's how tender this piece of pork is. Oh, I like this much more than the shrimp. This is where my heart belongs. Just had an idea. Okay, some pork, potatoes, bread, dunk it in that garlic butter. There you go. Mashed potato and pork jaw goes on top. A piece of prawn for the finishing touch. There you go. A pork jaw, prawn, garlic butter, mashed potato, open face sandwich. Oh. oh, you can't beat this. It's like the greatest hits album of food. Mm. Also, I heard their paella here is excellent. And this will be my first time having this dish in this country. I'll be honest, I've had this many times in the US, none of which tasted good. First of all, 
How they get their calamari so incredibly tender in this country, I have no idea, but restaurants really need to start learning that in the US. You can taste the essence of the ocean in here, essentially. A little briny, creamy, incredibly robust flavors. This, this is changing my entire perception of this dish. This and the pork jaw, my favorite thing here. The prawn, oh, oh, so much juice. And actually it all leaked onto that little puddle right there. See that? That's prawn essence. Mm. Gotta get this when you come here. Today was really awesome. I woke up, I ate, fell into a food coma, woke up, ate again. That's like a Garfield-esque type of day. And what an amazing experience getting to try all the local foods I never had before. I've always said the best way to get into Noah culture is taking a bite out of it. One of the churro, that's one of the must-try things here in Spain. And this place is the most popular. And check out the line. Two lines out the door. This line doesn't just extend out the door. Look at the inside. This is nuts. For turtle and hot chocolate. There's the churro, there's the hot chocolate. They're all waiting to get seated. If you want to just eat at the counter like what I'm doing, you know, you can just skip all that. Oh, it's like chocolate quicksand. Oh. I might need a knife for this, it's so thick. And what you do is you take your churro, and I just realized there's like a couple sizes of this. So you get the thin ones, and there's big ones too. Poras. Poras? Yeah. And this is like a Chinese yotel, like Chinese fried dough, it's so thick. It looks just like that. But this is the thin one. You like that one better? Yeah. This nice lady here, she she gave me a piece of her, her yotel. Oh yeah. After that you don't get dinner. Really? No dinner after this? Yeah, no dinner. So you don't know me so well. I'm gonna eat this and go to dinner right away. Thank you so much. That was delicious. Thank you. Yeah. So this is the churro that we typically see in the states. Really thin, really crispy. And this is definitely more doughy and airy. Oh. It's a little salty, incredibly light and crunchy. Oh my gosh, this is actually really amazing. Oh. I love this. You kind of need the hot chocolate because it is pretty salty. So with the sweet chocolate, it brings balance to this churro's life. That gets really heavy really quick. I mean, absolutely delicious. If you love churro, that is churro heaven right there. Freshly cooked, it came out of this nice little spiral they cut into pieces. They give you a lot. I mean, just the chocolate itself, if you, if you just drink that, that's gonna fill you up. And then with a the greasy churro, and as magnificent as that was, super crunchy on the outside. And dipping that into chocolate, it's just a savory meets sweet meets happy place. But now, I, I really need some food food. And for dinner, since I am in Spain, the original home of the suckling pig, that's what I'm gonna get, and I'm gonna have it in the oldest restaurant in the world. Well, hopefully, because I, I didn't make a reservation, so hopefully I can get a table, but here it is. It's like I'm entering a cavern. almost 300 years old. So this restaurant used to be an inn and it is actually quite large, it's multiple stories. And I'm dining in the cellar right now, which I think, I think is the coolest place to dine in this whole place. The ambiance is so unique and got a couple of their specialties. Suckling pig you have to get. Then got the roast lamb as well. I heard about this place when uh, I remember Andrew Zimmern came here on one of his shows. So ever since then, I've been wanting to try this place out to crossing another item off my food bucket list. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Love those sparkling bubbles. This is the famous suckling pig. And the skin, crispy skin. I haven't been this excited for pork since the Lachan experience in the Philippines. Holy hog, look at this color. The forks just crunch through the outer layer of skin. Oh man, this is what porky dreams are made of. Oh. That really ranks up there with some of the best suckling pig I've had. The skin, as I thought, crispy, melts in your mouth. Pork, obviously, so incredibly juicy. So you get that nice contrast and texture and the flavor. I mean, it's simply seasoned, but it's perfectly seasoned. But this is their other specialty, roasted lamb. 
All right, this is a little tough on the outside. Not the crispy skin, kind of good tough, but a little hard, so hopefully it's gonna be tender and juicy. Actually, my fears were unfounded because just cutting through the meat, I could tell this is tender. This, this is succulent. This is everything you want your lamb to be. That's a good piece. A little bit of skin, tons of meat. Mm, that's a juicy slab of lamb. I think the initial flavor was the best. And again, really simple ingredients. Simply season a little bit of salt. I think that's about it. Juiced, soaked through the meat. It is slightly, slightly gamey. Not too bad though, it's delicious. Mash the potatoes up, so get all that nice juice all up in there. That's a nice piece of pork. I'm just gonna rub some potatoes on that. If you wanna know what it's like to have a porky shana in your mouth, take a bite of that. Oh, the potatoes are so good too. Right? Yeah, potatoes look excellent, especially when it's soaked up in that juice, right? Mm. If I had to choose between the lamb and the uh, suckling pig, 100% the suckling pig. Now, don't get me wrong, the lamb is delicious, but the pig, that's the vine. This is going to be a great piece. This is the toll right here. Oh my gosh, this is where all the collagen lives. Mm. Oh god, this is so amazing. Beyond tender and juicy. The motherland of the suckling pig. And it really doesn't disappoint. This piece right here. This is the essence of the suckling pig. The crispy, melty skin. And that's where it's all about. That layer of fat, that is the source of the magic. So when you crunch through that potato chip-like skin and get to this part, you want to know bliss? This is bliss. Mm. Greatest finger lick ever. I think for the lamb, I'm just gonna go ahead and caveman this. Actually, I don't know. I said I like the pork more, and I probably still do, but this is slowly gaining my favor because it's so incredibly juicy. And this is quality lamb, otherwise it's just gonna be way too gamey. And this is like, you can taste that it's lamb but it's not all that gamey at all. Hey, did you guys like it? Oh my gosh, that is some phenomenal Ruff? pork. The best pork I think I've ever had in my best life. Best you ever had? Uh, to be honest, yeah. I think that's the best pork I've ever had. Wow, this is Kay and Haley, by the way. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is that good. Don't, don't just trust me, trust them. <sighs> that was an amazingly satisfying meal. It's not just that the food is delicious. I'm eating at the oldest restaurant in the world. It just feels different, you know? Like I'm sitting in the cellar of this probably haunted building. This is way beyond just food. This is a total, total experience. Oh, this is really cool. This is the wine cellar and the server was saying that, how was it, good? Yeah, good, good. Yeah. You must go down. <laughs> yeah? And the server was saying that there's 300 year old bottles of wine down there. And also the royal family used to use this as a passage into the city. I'm gonna try to take you guys down there. Let's go. Oh, this is crazy. Super old bottles of wine. Oh my gosh. That was pretty cool. That was a remarkable meal at an even more remarkable establishment. I mean, I took a bite of history tonight and history had crispy skin and it melted in my mouth. One of the most awesome dining experiences I've had. Hopefully you guys liked this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Till we eat again, see you later.